In the previous video, we learned how we can invoke the entry processor to modify objects without bringing them into the client. In this video, we'll learn how the nodes and cache servers recognize object changes in the cache. Before testing the feature, you should download the event listener.zip file, extract, and import it into your workspace. After importing the project, you should prepare the run configurations for three classes that are in the cache Java package listen all, listen filter, and listen light events. After successfully creating the run configurations, let's have a look at the listen all Java class. We use the add map listener method to add an event listener to our cache. This method has one argument, which is the user defined event listener, which implements the map listener interface. The map listener interface presents us with the following three methods to recognize cache events. The entry deleted method is called when an object is removed from the cache, and we use the delete object method to execute various operations. The entry updated method is called when an object is replaced with a new one. It takes one argument and we can use both old and new objects in this method. Last but not least is the entry inserted method. It also takes one argument, which is the object that is inserted. Let's start the two instances of the listen all class. You'll notice that the second server recognizes insert, delete, or update operations, which are performed by the first server. On the first server in this case, we will add one object. Let's have a look at the second server now. The second server recognizes the object that is added by the first server. We then perform one more operation. Insert an object into the second server, and you'll notice that the first server recognizes the object. The second example is about light events. In the previous example, we saw that you can access both the old and new objects information in the event listener method. If you are sure about the change that you are looking for, but not the object itself, you can use light events. With the light events feature, however, you cannot access objects. Let's see this in an example. In the listen light events Java class, the add map listener method gets three arguments. The first argument is the same as that of the previous one. The second argument is that of the filter class, which we set as null in this example. It means that all events will be listened to. The third argument specifies whether the light events feature is enabled or not. Let's run two instances of the light events class. In the customer event listener class, you can see that the customer IDs are printed in all the three methods. But if we use light events, we would not be able to use the object value. Thus, we will get an exception if we perform a cache operation. Let's see how this works. Type in p and then 10. Since we cannot access the object's value here, we get an exception that is quite evident from the result on the screen. The third example is about listening to the filtered data changes instead of all the changes in the data. In this example, for the listener filter method, initially we define a filter variable. Then we use this filter variable as the second argument of a map event listener object. Now, when we call the add map listener method, we put the map event listener object into the second argument. The map event dot e all feature specifies a pre filter. It means that we initially observe all the events and then perform the other filters. Alternatively, you could also use the delete, insert, and update prefilters. In fact, we will be observing changes that will be performed for a customer whose ID value is 100. Let's try this example out. Start two instances of the listen filter example. Now type in p and then 10. From the result, it is quite evident that the second server doesn't recognize any changes as the customer ID is not 100. Now type in p and then 100. And we can see that in this case, the second server expectedly recognizes changes as the customer ID is 100. 
Finally, let's take a look at the process of adding a custom filter that listens for specific events. In the update filter class, we define the rule in the evaluate method as you can see here. You'll also need to implement the serialization method and a portable object interface as well. Along with that, we'll have to configure the POF config.xml file to use a custom filter across network nodes as you can see here. In this video, we learn how to listen to all events or filtered events. We have also learned the concept of light events. In the next video, we'll take a look at using map triggers.